Hey guys, just hanging out in my closet, drinking beer. You know, just a normal Tuesday night for me. So a lot of the gear up here behind me, pretty expensive, a little bit delicate. Some of the stuff is very delicate. So you have to really kind of know how to take care of this stuff. So that's what I'm gonna go over today. A little bit of at-home care, what I do in the field to make sure I don't ruin all of this equipment, as well as some preventative maintenance at home. So first up, a little raincoat tip here. Basically, rain jackets have a waterproof coating over top of the material. A lot of lightweight rain jackets like this one tend to wet out or get uh, like soaked all the way through pretty quick. You kind of don't have to toss them whenever they get like that. All you need to do is reapply the DWR coating on here. You can get that in like a spray bottle. Like I said, I've only done that once on this and it might be about time to do it again. Whenever you spray with water, if you're in the rain, if you can see the water really beating off of it, uh, you're probably good. You probably still have a lot of that coating on there. However, if you look at your jacket and it just looks completely soaked, like you don't see any water really running off of it or beating, uh, and you'll know because you're, you're getting wet on the inside, probably time to reapply that DWR coating. Tip number two, do not be afraid to re-seam seal your tent. So this one actually right here, this is my Six Moon Designs Deschutes tarp. I was going out to Colorado last year. This thing was pretty new. I've only used this for a good solid year, but it just seemed like one of the seams up top uh, was kind of open a little bit from where it was like factory seam sealed. And I have a bottle of seam sealant. Uh, that you can buy. I think it's called Silnet. Uh, that might be, is that, I don't know if that's right or not. Really, really easy to apply on here. You, you shouldn't be scared to do that. And it's just a good way to make sure you're not gonna be dripping water through your seams. Uh, I think a lot of people think that if their seams start dripping through their tent that um, it's, it's pretty much done. I'd like to think a lot of people don't know that, but I, I don't think that's as widely known as it should be. But you can seal up those seams with the little tube of seam sealant, as well as you can spray this with the DWR coating that you uh, spray on your raincoat to fully ensure that your tents are gonna stay waterproof for a longer period of time. Next thing here I want to talk about is uh, puffy jackets. So puffy jackets, mine especially are down, down feathers. You do not want to store down as in, like in a compressed state. So you don't want to like have these in the stuff sacks that they are supplied with or like this one folds up into its own pocket where it compromises the down so that if you leave it stored for months at a time, it's not going to ever really fluff up and you're gonna lose a lot of that insulation value that down provides. <laughs> They're very delicate, this one especially, Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer. Um, like I said in my last video, if you caught that one, I've had this for over six years. It is in near mint condition. Uh, stay away from fire, or if fire is like spitting sparks and stuff, just <laughs> take it off or, or watch your distance. I've been by a lot of fires with this, and um, you just got to know what that fire is doing to make sure sparks don't come up and hit you. Another thing I do is I keep it uh, away from water. I, for me, I feel like when down gets wet, like, like over and over again, I feel like it really compromises the down. I feel like it just doesn't really loft up or it, it kind of clumps up and doesn't really ever fully fluff up again. So I got the back of this one wet. I can kind of tell that it's a little bit like crispy here down at the bottom and the other spots that weren't like completely soaked are still like in perfect condition. But other than that, this thing is in really good condition. There is one tiny, tiny little a rip. It's it's not even like a hole big enough that I, I feel like I need to patch it. It's just like a tiny little pinhole and it's from, I, I put a log on my arm and I just carried a log like 20 feet to my camp. Huge mistake. I never carry firewood with this thing on. You throw a log on your shoulder with this jacket, you're going to rip hole like right through it. So just be super careful with these and make sure you store them out like this and not in a stuff sack. That brings me to quilt or sleeping bag storage. I use um, all down quilts. So up here I got my zero degree, my 20 degree, and my 40 degree hammock gear quilts. This goes for synthetic down as well. You shouldn't have any down or synthetic insulation really compressed uh, for a long period of time. So you can see up here, hammock gear actually provides you when you order these with these canvas bags. 
So they're lofted up decent in there. I know in a lot of backpacking videos, I see people will have them like hanging up. I think it's kind of more for like decoration, but you'll, you'll see them like hanging or if you have a big enough closet, it's good to just leave them hanging so that uh, they're always fully lofted. But they, there's a lot of air in these. They're not really compressed at all, but I don't ever keep them in the little supplied stuff sacks for a super long period of time. I, I think I have left them in for a couple weeks at a time after a trip or something if I just got lazy, but always keep them in their canvas sacks. Also with these, same thing. I, I, I don't ever bring these by the fire. I, I try my best to not get these wet and they are all in super, super good condition. A lot of times I hear people talking about like washing down, uh, sleeping in them, you're sweating, they get smelly and oily and nasty. Um, I've never washed any of my, any of my quilts. I don't know what it is. I'm not like a, a really hot sleeper, so I don't sweat a lot. I'm not a smelly guy. I, I mean, I was born with a gift where I can go all day without deodorant and not really have BO, not have body odor, like at all. That's good for gear maintenance because my stuff really never smells. I have no experience with washing these, but that might be something you want to consider because uh, the oils and stuff might really take a toll on the material. Another tip here is uh, water bottle storage. So I just use uh, Smart Water or Life Water bottles here. Um, what I do with these, when I when I come home from a trip, I will dump out the, the nasty pond water, whatever I'm drinking on the trip. I always rinse them out with like tap water or something like clean not not ridden with parasites and then i will take the caps off and i will sit them on a towel by the sink or something to make sure they fully get dry on the inside so i've went through a lot of these bottles in the past before i really realized how to make them last and i think the key is to just make sure they are completely dry when you store them the game changer tip for me was always make sure you store them with the cap open uh, there could be residual drops of water in there or I mean, I swear I've stored these before with the, like, completely dry with the caps closed. And when I open them up, they just stink. These ones are fresh. I've had these for a while. I just make sure I always store them with the caps off or, like, these ones I just leave the caps open. Same goes for my dirty water bags, these Sawyer bags. So I know one, that one's good. One of these uh, I notice kind of smells. Normally I keep them with the caps off. I don't know why the caps are on them right now. Okay, that one's kind of smelly. So this is something I have some experience with. If you neglect your dirty water bag and you go out on the trail with a bag that smells really bad, um, no filter will filter out that bad taste. So if you don't have water additive, um, it's pretty bad. There was one trip when I had a smelly bag and a good bag and I could not, I had no water additives, so I could not use the dirty bag. It just made my water taste so bad even running it through the filter. But if this happens with either your dirty bag or your clean bottles, I'll fill it up with hot water. I'll put some baking soda in there, put the cap back on, shake it all up, and I'll just let it sit for hours and hours. And that usually takes the smell away. I've, I've rejuvenated quite a few of these Sawyer bags that way, and it seems to really do the trick. On the topic of water filters, uh, right here, my Sawyer squeeze, you can see in the tote. So when I get home from every trip, I take the little plunger thing that they give you to back flush this. Uh, I always back flush it with clean water, uh, especially with the Sawyer Fulls. Uh, the Sawyer Minis, um, I feel like they drain out a lot quicker. These ones I leave propped up on a towel just like I do with my bottles and make sure I drain all of that nasty water out of there. These take a long time, I think, to drain all the water out. So the last thing you want to do is put it in storage for months with like any type of water in there. It's probably going to create mold or just get really smelly, nasty, not good. The Sawyer Minis, I always notice that I can like just blow in them and blow most of the water out and then they'll they'll kind of drain. And I remember I, I would do that on trips and I'd throw it in my pocket uh, in my sleeping bag because you don't want them to freeze, so you want to keep them on your body at night. And it, it would drain the water quickly. I think the uh, Sawyer Foles here, they just always constantly drip. So ever since I switched from the mini to the actual Sawyer Squeeze, I always keep it in like a Ziploc bag because if I throw it in my pocket, it's probably going to drip out all over me uh, in the middle of the night. And not a longevity tip, but something that I do is I actually replace my water filters quite often. So uh, they're supposed to get like 10,000 gallons or something uh, filtered through these. I don't ever come close to that. And I think most of the time is... 
Um, I'm always in a situation where I'm not sure if my water filter froze overnight or not. Once that happens, I'm always skeptical whether I'm really getting the full benefit of the filter. Uh, just one of those things where you're running a lot of nasty water through there. Uh, these are only $30, so every couple of years I'll just spend 30 bucks and ditch one and I'll buy a new one. And then you get new uh, Sawyer bags with that and everything. Even though you might have a filter that has a lot of life left in it, there's no doubt that a new uh, water filter is going to make your water taste better. And a lot of the time I don't bring like drink additives or anything, I'm just drinking straight water. And when you don't bring any flavoring for the water, um, you really can tell when your filter is heavily used. So my last tip is just make sure everything is really dried out, whether you can do it at camp or when you get home. So a lot of time, and you'll see in a lot of my videos, something I always do is if I get sunlight in the morning at a camp, even if I only have like 15 minutes or a half hour, uh, I'll take the rain fly off of my tent and I'll hang it up in a tree just to get some sunlight and some wind uh, on it to try to dry it. So when I pack it up, it's it's a little bit lighter because I'm not carrying that heavy water weight and uh, it'll just dry out quicker when I get home. A lot of the time though, you come home from backpacking trips, you're gonna have wet gear. Like there's so many times when you just, you don't have time to dry it out till you get home. I had my big tarp a couple weeks ago hanging up uh, in my bathroom over my shower rod and my entire place just smelled like a campfire. Like. And I like that smell, but it was really, really bad. Anything you have that is wet though, like maybe foot boxes of sleeping bags or tarps, tents, uh, just hang it up everywhere you can. The warm air inside your house will dry it relatively quickly. And you just want to make sure everything is completely dry before you shove it back in the stuff sacks. Little fun fact, whenever I went to Archer's Fork a couple years ago with the Shills and Red, it was our Colorado Trail reunion. We all did the Colorado Trail. We convened back again like in six months or a year uh, to have a little reunion. And Red had a, I remember this, because he had a, a Z-Pax duplex, $600 tent that he used a couple times. He was planning on going on an AT through hike. And he put that thing away wet. And I think he had it in the stuff sack wet for probably two or three months. That thing smelled so freaking bad. I don't know what it takes. I, I imagine you could air it out or kind of scrub it down and get that smell out. But it's wet, nasty tent it, tent smell is just something I really, really hate. So I always make sure my stuff is completely dry before I pack it away. If you guys have gotten any value out of this, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. I have tons of videos about gear and tips and as well as trip videos. So hit that notification bell beside it so that I can notify you of that. Leave a comment, leave a like, and yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.